The following is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. Hello there. Welcome to the Panthers Experience. We are going to talk about the development of Bryce Young. That's right. Your favorite quarterback. The inevitable. The God himself. We will be covering how he will be shitting on you hoes this coming season. And I will too. Oh, I will. I will pull out the receipts. And I will come for you. When judgment day comes, no one is safe. <laughs> what kind of shit is that? The first pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select. everybody what be going so man your boy q aka uncle Quan. welcome to the panthers experience man we are back on the channel with another film breakdown today we are here to break down our coach dave canales once again for part two of film study man we're going to talk about a divisional round against the detroit lions and what he did well against this team man it was a very competitive game all the way to the end and we're going to talk about just that man how competitive was he what kind of plays he was calling and all that good stuff, man. If you guys haven't seen your part one to our Dave Canales film where we broke down the wild card round, man, you guys can do so by following that link in the description. It'll take you right to the video where you can get all caught up and you can see the film study over there. Now, Panther Nation, I'm not going to hold you. Um, I've been doing a lot of listening. You know what I'm saying? I've been hopping, uh, hopping on different podcasts, man. Shout out to all the Panther creators, man. Um, y'all have y'all been grinding, bro. I've been, I've been listening. I've been watching. And, um, hey, y'all doing a damn thing. But listen, I've been researching, I've been watching, I've been listening. Y'all, I can't lie to y'all, man. Hey, hey, Dave Canales. I like that nigga. I like it. The more I watch him, and the more I listen to like his interviews and stuff like that, the more it's, it's starting to make sense. We finally got a coach in here that's not talking gibberish. He's not talking no bullshit. This is a coach that really know football. I feel like. Carolina, we got ourselves a decent coach. I really do. We got a young, innovative coach. We've seen the film. We're about to break down some more film. But, hey, shout out to Dave Canales. This is a guy that can get on the mic, and he can really tell you some, some shit about football. And I, I really admire that. I would really like sitting here listening to his philosophy. He emphasizes every time he get on that mic, we need to, you know, play ball. Let's protect the ball. Let's get back to our football and really hold the time of possession and that's also take away the football so that we can get that shit back to our offense and stuff like that, man. So shout out to Dave Canales, man. Um, I can't wait to see what he does in Carolina. But let's talk about Dave Canales and Bryce Young. Obviously, I told y'all in the first video, Bryce Young and Dave Canales are tied together. Their success or lack thereof for Dave Canales is going to depend on the, on the development of Bryce Young. Now, we got to talk about Bryce, y'all. We got to talk about Bryce. If you are new to the channel or if you are not a Panthers fan, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here, man. Well, it's really not a secret. It's, it's fucking ghetto here, man. Um, <laughs> we really have a split fan base that is, uh, we've been arguing over Bryce Young since, um, well, really since before uh, draft day, man. Um, and it's, it, had, it ain't been pretty. It's been getting worse. <laughs> a lot of people are counting Bryce out. A lot of people are, you know, taking up for Bryce. It's really no in between. It's either you with Bryce or you not, you know what I mean? That's really what been what's been going on over here. And um, there's a different tiers of Bryce haters. There's the guys that's just like, look, he ain't showing me shit, so I just don't believe him. I'm not gonna write him off, but I just don't see nothing yet for me to jump, you know, to, to jump on the on the, uh, the train. You also have the haters that are like, look, fuck this dude. I don't want nothing to do with him. He can't play ball. He ain't showing me shit. He needs to be off of my team. And then you have on the other side, the Bryce, I guess the Bryce lovers, uh, the Bryce sexuals. That's what that's what they call, I can't make this shit up, y'all. That's what they call them. The Bryce sexuals, the, the Bryce lovers, uh, the Bryce whatever. These guys tend to defend Bryce Young. They're saying, look, Bryce Young doesn't have help. 
Bryce Young don't have an O-line. He don't have receiver separation. Things like that. You know, they some of these guys do refuse to see the flaws in Bryce Young. I'm not going to hold you. Some of them will literally tell you, like, hey, Bryce Young is the, the greatest quarterback in the league, which is fucking nuts. Um, some of them will tell you, hey, it's all on everybody else. Bryce Young ain't did no wrong. But, Panther Nation, I'm here to tell you, whether you like Bryce Young or not, year two is on the way. And we are about to see you exactly what Bryce Young is. I believe Dave Canales has all the tools, at least up here, to make Bryce Young at least improve. I'm not going to sit here and say he's going to help Bryce Young become a fucking elite quarterback, a god-tier quarterback. No. But I do believe that Dave Canales has the track record to help Bryce Young out. I mean, we talked about it before. He helped out Russell Wilson. He helped out uh, Geno Smith. He helped out Baker Mayfield. These are guys who've been written off. Not Russell Wilson, but Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield. People, even including myself, was just writing them off and like, okay, I've seen what you can do. This ain't it. This ain't it. Dave Canales was a part of those two uh, quarterbacks, and he actually helped resurrect their careers helping them pass for over 4,000 yards and making a name for themselves in the league. Now, with Bryce Young, he said in a press conference that Bryce Young doesn't need to be fixed. He told us he wants to create an offense that plays to Bryce Young's strengths. Now, a lot of people tend to question, what is Bryce Young's strengths? Rightfully so, it should be questioned, you know what I mean? Because I will agree, Bryce Young is not really proven yet, however, he does have 16 games under his belt. He has the experience. He's seen different coverages. He's seen different defenses. So, moving forward, what are Bryce Young's strengths and how can we build upon Bryce Young's strengths? So, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what Bryce Young's strengths are. Dave Canales did tell us that, again, Bryce Young don't need fixing. <laughs> now, remember those Bryce haters I told y'all about, the different tiers of Bryce haters. Some of these guys who are literally at the most hated tier will tell you straight to your face, Bryce Young doesn't do anything well at all. Anything, nothing. He can't throw nothing. He can't, like, he's not accurate. He can't do shit. I find that very weird to say because Bryce Young does show flashes. I'm, again, I'm not saying he's a god tier quarterback. He's not proven yet, but he does show flashes. And that's really the thing that frustrated me through this uh, previous year. Those flashes were ignored. Um, we didn't build upon these flashes. Now, when I say flashes, I'm, I'm talking about his strengths, what he does well, you know what I mean? And we're going to talk about what he does well, man, but um, again, we can't ignore the flashes of Bryce Young. I mean, there's literally a whole 20-minute highlight video on NFL that shows Bryce Young's flashes. That's literally what, high, what a highlight video is. It's showing you the flashes. So we can't sit here and ignore the fact that Bryce Young does have flashes and that he does have strengths. So now what Dave Canales is trying to do here, he's trying to build upon him. But again, let's go back to what is Bryce Young's strengths. What I've observed on film, what I've observed from watching the games in person and at home, Bryce Young definitely has a calm demeanor. That's one thing. He has a calm demeanor. No matter what adversity is against him, he has the same exact facial expression throughout the entire game. He stays calm. Now, he does have a little bit of fire to him. You know what I'm saying? We saw him throw, throw the tablet and stuff like that, yada, yada. Some people will say it's passion. Some people will say he bitching. Another thing I've observed from Bryce Young, those two games that we won this season came off of the hip of Bryce Young showing that clutch ability. Let's talk about that first game that we won against Houston Texans. I broke down the film. And um, Bryce Young did a hell of a job in that final drive to get that game winning field goal. And again, going back to, you know, again, the Bryce haters, they will literally discredit everything he did on that drive. They will tell you it was a run game and they will tell you that it was just Eddie Pinero that kicked that field goal. They're not going to tell you how we got to that point. They're going to tell you that Bryce Young had no part. Now, in reality, Bryce Young stayed calm in that last drive and he drove us all the way down that field in what, five minutes or something like that? He's showing the clutch ability. Not only did he show the clutch ability against the Houston Texans, but he also showed the clutch ability against the Atlanta Falcons. I was in attendance in both of these games. Now in the final drive, I believe this was somewhere around five minutes as well. He held the clock, he milked the clock, and he kept the ball in our possession. Something that Dave Canale has talked about as well, you know, holding the ball and, you know, milking the clock and time of possession. Let's control the ball. Bryce Young did that really well against the Houston Texans in the final minutes, and he did that, he did that really well against uh, the Atlanta Falcons in the final minutes. 
Also, I would like to you know bring up an honorable mention. The Green Bay Packers. That game was a phenomenal game by Bryce Young. Can't nobody deny that. Some people will, again, discredit him. <laughs> they will discredit him. They'll say the defense was bad. I get it. Yeah, the Green Bay defense was bad at the time. But, hey, they made the fucking playoffs. And they held Dallas to, to shambles, really. But that's besides the point. Bryce Young, in that game, showed me everything I needed to see. He showed the clutch ability. He tried to get his team down the field. It was unfortunate that it was only one second left. We didn't have any timeouts. But if you've seen the poise that Bryce Young has shown, the calmness that he's shown, and the accuracy when it mattered the most, he put on the show. These three games showed me flashes. I'm not, again, I'm not saying he has it, but these are flashes that can really bring out the best of him if he improves upon those flashes. He's calm. And he does have a clutch gene, I do believe. That's my opinion based on those three games that we just brought up. Another strength of Bryce Young. I would say Bryce Young is definitely a quick processor coming out of Alabama. I think he had one of the highest S2 scores. But hey, fuck the S2 scores. CJ Stroud showed us that that shit don't matter. But the fact that Bryce Young does have that quick processing ability, we can use that to our advantage. Now, when I say quick processing... I mean, he is able to go through his reads super quick like a supercomputer. Now, I'm speaking of Alabama, not his rookie year. His rookie year, the ball was held a little bit longer. You know what I'm saying? He had times where he was stagnant in the pocket. And, um, you know what I'm saying? You can't blame our receivers for not getting open. But again, Bryce Young has to learn how to speed up that clock and get out of the pocket. But coming out of Alabama, he did show that he had a fast processing ability. And we got to figure out a way with those 16 games of experience, how to bring that out and make him comfortable in the offense so that he can get back to, you know, that quick processing ability. Another strength of Bryce Young, man, Bryce Young does a really great job of short and intermediate throws, man. He's very accurate when it comes to short and, uh, and intermediate throws, especially across the middle, which is ironic because a lot of people wrote Bryce Young off before the draft and said he was just too small to play ball. He can't see over the line. He can't throw over the middle. Bryce Young did that just well um, throughout the duration of the season, man. He threw over the middle just fine to me, man. I mean, it's been a number of times where I saw Bryce Young throw over the middle and it was a fucking strike. And last but not least, Bryce Young has a super fast release. If you watch Bryce Young when he throw the ball, that shit get out of his hands quick. And I noticed that when I watched him in person during training camp. Yeah, I seen it on film in Alabama, but it's different when you see it in person. That bitch get out of there quick. Now, the thing I've noticed with Dave Canale is and uh, at least in Tampa Bay with Baker Mayfield, he likes to get that ball out quick. And he told us he wants to get that ball out quick. Now, in order to help Bryce Young improve, Bryce Young is going to need a supporting cast. Now, when I say he needs a supporting cast, that means he needs receivers to be able to create separation. He needs a run game that is decent enough to take the pressure off to the pass game. You know what I mean? We don't need these defenses stacking the box throughout the whole game and just playing fucking cover zero the, the whole game because it's just so easy to jam up your receivers and to crash down the middle. Now, if we want to see Bryce Young's numbers improve, we got to create an offense that plays team ball. What does that mean? That don't mean have a fucking quarterback that's just dropping back 40, 50 times a game and just launching it, trying to, you know saying, rely on whatever's down the field. It doesn't mean having a run game and running the ball fucking 60 times a game, no. Playing team ball is getting your athletes in space and making the defense stress. Play to what the defense is giving you, man. Play to the defense's weakness and literally distribute the ball in different players' hands because if the defense can't really predict where the ball is going to go, especially with all these pre-snap motions, it's going to make it hard. Now, somebody I like to compare Bryce Young to, at least for what I believe Bryce Young could be, is Tua Tungvaluwa. Tua Tungvaluwa was another guy that was really written off early in his career. There was, a, there was a lot of people that say he didn't have the arm strength. A lot of people say he didn't have the accuracy. A lot of people said he was injury prone. But if you look over there at Miami and see the supporting cast that they built around Tua Tungvaluwa, look at that offense now. Tua Tungvaluwa is easily throwing over 4,000 yards. That's literally the recipe that we have to follow here in Carolina. Get Bryce Young some athletes so that they can create plays in space. Bryce Young is going to get it to you. That's one thing about Bryce Young. He has heavy anticipation with his throws. And what does that mean? That means as soon as these receivers come out of their break, 
it's, a, it's full on stride. He's gonna hit you in stride, that way you don't have to stop it, you know what I'm saying? Nah, as soon as that, you turn around, that motherfucker gonna hit you straight in the face, and it's up to you to make a play. And I feel like that's really how we're gonna play to Bryce Young's strength. I feel like that's what our offense needs to be. Now we're gonna get into the film, and we're gonna elaborate a little bit more. As always, man, y'all make sure y'all hit that like button if you are here, man. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Let's go ahead and get into it, baby. All right, guys, let's, let's talk about this first play from scrimmage here in the divisional round against the Detroit Lions. This was a very competitive game, like I said before, man. But uh, let's talk about the first play from scrimmage and what Dave Canales did to basically put stress on the defense early in this game. So if you take a look at your screen, we got Baker Mayfield on the center lineup in a strong formation with a fullback right here in the background. And you got a running back. You got two receivers. Take a look at the top of your screen. You got Godwin at the top of your screen. Godwin's going to be pulled in motion. And as soon as that ball is snapped, he's going to go. Boom. Mike Evans, he's going to run a boom. He's going to come sit. That's pretty much deeper than that. I, I drew up some bullshit. Y'all forgive me. <laughs> but take a look at the tight end. Tight end is going to come out come out far. He's going to sit. And then this fullback is going to come out in the flat. And let's take a look at how Dave Canale has pretty much stressed the defense early. Now, let's talk about what I mean with that. So if you take a look at Dave, uh, Chris Godwin, not Dave Godwin, what the fuck am I talking about? Take a look at Chris Godwin at the top of your screen, right? Now, watch him in motion. Look at this route. This route is bringing this corner back. He's backpedaling, bringing him out of his spot. Now, Baker goes to the check down right here, but take a look at this defense. This defense knows early on in this game, okay, they not fucking around. They trying to push this defense back, and they did just that. So take a look at, again, I'm going to let this thing get off my screen. Take a look at the corner right here at the bottom of your screen. Take a look at number one. He's backpedaling. He's supposed to play pretty much like a flat-ish zone. But he's backpedaling to the far end. So, again, you stressing that defense early. You got them backpedaling. You got them backing up further than their, their original zone. And I think that right there stresses the defense early on because, all right, that lets me know that you're going to be an aggressive play caller this game. So maybe I do need to back my defense up. And what Dave Canales likes to do, he likes to take what the defense gives him. So with this defense backing up, keep a lookout for these intermediate and short routes throughout the film. So again, we're gonna run it one more time. You can see for yourself, you got these guys backpedaling, backing that defense up early in the game. Goes to his check down, effective play, almost gets the first on the first play of scrimmage. Let's move on to the next All right, one. Guys, let's take a look at our second play right here, man. Um, if you take a look at your screen, this is a third down situation. Obviously, Baker is in an empty set by himself in the backfield. Um, now we're gonna let this play run, but I'm gonna draw it out a little bit. I want you guys to know that this is man coverage. This is man across the board. This is man coverage. All right, so with that being said, what Dave Canales does on third down, again, remember I was telling y'all he has this defense backing up early. Now, he's going to have these guys in man coverage playing a chase game. We let it run. You got motion coming across. This looks like a screen initially. But again, you got guys playing a chase game in man coverage. This was a perfect coverage against this play call. Because, I mean, you want man-to-man -man right here. So, look at everybody forcing these guys on the inside. Mike Evans in the slot. You got 19 running across as well. You got Godwin running across as well. So, this is pretty much, this is stressful on the defense. Because again, look, this looks like a screen, right? You got this guy coming out in motion. Kind of like a safety valve, maybe like a decoy on this drive. And then, Baker Mayfield, he got a clean pocket. Guys coming across. The safety is really just defending the deep routes right now. So, this intermediate is wide open. Look at the spacing that Mike Evans has on this drive. And even with 19 a little bit. If you wait a little bit with 19, 19 might have been open too. But I'm pretty sure this play was designed for Mike Evans to be the first read. Mike Evans, a simple cross route. That's an easy, easy ball, man. Easy ball for Mike Evans, and that's an easy first down, man. Great call by Dave Canales on third down. Again, backing up that defense, making them play your game. So you can definitely beat them in the intermediate game and the short game when you have these defenses backing up and playing man coverage. Let's move on to the next All one. All right, guys, let's take a look at this play right here, man. Uh, Dave Canales right here on this play calls up an RPO play. So what is RPO? RPO is run, pass, option. So you have the option to either hand the ball off based on what the defense gives you, or if you see something that you like pre-snap, you can pull the ball for yourself and release that bitch quick. But the thing with an RPO, it has to be out quick. Again, Dave Canales stressed 
getting the ball out of Bryce Young's hands fast. I think Bryce Young did this really, really well in uh, Alabama running the RPO system uh, because, again, he's that quick processor. He can read those defenses in college. I'm not, not, not saying the NFL yet, but he could read those defenses in college, and uh, he could you know, get that ball out quick to his, his athletes so that they can uh, create plays in space. So let's let this play run right quick, and we're going to talk about it. So you got Baker in the pistol formation. Again, a lot of motion. Damn near every play he got motion. Baker pulls that thing. Number 10 is wide open. Baker recognized that pre-snap. So the thing with RPO, you got to look at the alignment of the defense. So number 10. Number 10. Uh, well, this shit is in the way. I don't know how to move this, man. I really don't. But number 10 down here at the bottom of your screen. Y'all forgive that bar right there. Um, if you take a look at number 10, number 10 is running the route across the middle. Now, Baker Mayfield, obviously he knows that, but he's looking at the alignment of number 31. Number 31 is backed up really far, so he has room to get this to this guy in space. So, all right, so let's let this play run. Again, Baker Mayfield is looking at the alignment of number 31 on this play. So, as soon as Baker snaps the ball, we're going to slow it down. You got motion. Now, take a look at 31. 31 is stepping up. Look at what Baker's eyes are. Look at what Baker's eyes are. He's already looking at number 10. As soon as he sees number 31 stepping up, he's like, oh, yeah, I got him. I got him right here. Number 10 breaks out of that route, and that's an easy throwing lane for Baker Mayfield. Look at the anticipation for Baker Mayfield. That shit is going to be right there in stride for number 10 to get that yak. Easy first down. I think Bryce Young will do really well with this, but you have to have a supporting cast. Again, you can't have receivers like Adam Thielen at wide out trying to, you know, rely on him to create plays in space. Adam Thielen does a really great job of creating separation and in intermediate routes and short routes. However, he's not really like a big yak guy. He's not going to get yards at the catch. So, we need to get athletes in here that can do that. Jonathan Mingo, I mean, Mingo is, we don't know what he can be yet. He's in development. DJ Chark, DJ Chark might not even be here, but DJ Chark struggled with separation throughout the entire season. Um, who am I missing? Don't matter. But regardless, man, we got to get some receivers in here that can create separation, that can create, you know, plays in space. When I say create plays in space, I mean use your speed to throw these defenses off. You can, you know, use your juke moves, your truck move, whatever. You beat this defense with your speed and make them back up and play your game. So we got to get these guys out in space and we got to make it easy for our quarterback, man. Our quarterback don't need to be dropping back and sitting in that pocket for damn near five seconds waiting on somebody to get open. We got to get this shit out quick. And once you get this shit out quick throughout the entire game, it's going to stress the defense and it's going to make it hard for uh, pressure to get to the quarterback. So, again, do I think Bryce Young can thrive in an offense like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that would be the best way to utilize Bryce Young moving forward in the 2024 season. Um, because, again, if you just having him drop back 40, 50 times a game and that's it, yeah, we, that's a recipe for disaster. So this is something that I do like about Dave Canales. He switches it up, and he likes to get rid of the ball quick. So, again, simple RPO right here, but, hey, as always, effective, man. So let's move on to the next play. All right, guys, let's take a look at this next play, man. Um, one thing I really like about this play is, I mean, it's nothing extravagant at all, man. It's really simple as hell. Don't really get a lot of yardage. But, again, Dave Canales emphasizes getting the ball out of his quarterback's hands quick. So what Baker Bayfield does right here. It's, I mean, it's really just as simple as possible, man. Just get the ball out quick and take what the defense is giving you. Take a look at the pre-snap motion right here. Number 10 is in motion, so you see immediately this defense shifts over to the right. Baker Mayfield also notices that this is zone coverage because nobody is shadowing number 10. Nobody is traveling with him. Nobody is, you know, shifting over to uh, guard number 10. So Baker Mayfield immediately knows that this is a zone coverage. That defense shifts out right. So what Baker Mayfield does after recognizing that during the pre-snap, he goes through his progressions really fast, and he recognizes that that those linebackers that right there, they shift over to the right. So his his check down that's coming out of the backfield is right there. Get his guys in space. Let your guys do the work for you, man. Let your guys do the hard work and get them in space to try to create plays, man. So look at it again, man. Let's take a look at it again from the top. Again, you got pre-snap motion number 10. Let me draw it up real quick. Number 10 is in motion coming to this side right here in the slot. These linebackers, they shift over. The running back is going to come out of the backfield. And because they shift over, that's going to give this guy some space to, you know, do what he do. Get your athletes in space and let them do the hard work. So let's let this play run from the top. 
And we're going to move on to the next play. All right, number 10 in motion. Baker Mayfield sees the zone, gets it out quick. Get about maybe a solid six yards out of that play. Again, nothing extravagant, nothing crazy. But take what the defense is giving you. It don't got to be a first down every play. It don't got to be a touchdown every play. Take those five, six yards, get that check down, move on to the next play. All right, guys, let's take a look at another play right here, man. Baker Mayfield is in an empty set, pretty much spreading the defense out right here. So <laughs> one thing I like about Dave Canales, man, Dave Canales is a sneaky bastard, man. He's a sneaky bastard. So if you take a look at your screen, look at Godwin. Godwin is going to pretty much run across the field. Auden, their tight end, he's running across the field. This guy right here, he's going to come out. He's going to sit. Now, Evans, he's going to do the same thing. He's running the out route. Now, notice one thing about this, man. Everybody is running in the same direction. Everybody's running to the left side of the field. You got this many guys. One, two, three, four. Basically running to the left side of the field. What does that do to the defense? It stresses the defense out. It makes them overcommit. Everybody is guarding the left side or to their side, the right side of the field on defense. But here's how Dave Canales is a sneaky bastard. <laughs> Take a look at their running back at the top of your screen. Right? You got all this motion over here going to the left, yada, yada. Right? This motherfucker right here sneaks his ass all the way to the, <laughs> to the right side of the field or the left side for the defense. And this makes it an easy Easy play for Baker Mayfield to get it off his hands. Now, we're going to let this play run, and then we're going to talk about it. So, let's let it run. All right. Ironically, no pre-snap motion right here. Didn't need it. All right, got guys running into each other. Now, this is a hell of a tackle. This is a fucking tackle right here, bro, because this is supposed to be six. Look at everybody overcommitting. Look at this defense, y'all. Even a safety. Is committing to the right side of the field. Take a look at it. You got number 31 right here committing. Hold on. Let me let me draw this thing up, man, so you guys can visibly see what's going on. Look at number 29. Obviously, he's guarding number 10 in man coverage. Safety got, you know what I'm saying, you got a safety playing deep third. He's going to help out with Mike Evans. Mike Evans is a deep threat. You know what I'm saying? So he's going to help out right here. So he's committing to the right. Obviously, man coverage. He's committing to the right. Man coverage. Man coverage. Committed to the right. All this motion, man, all this motion to the left side. You got guys bumping into each other because of these cross routes right here. You got all this motion going out to the left, and then you got your running back sneaking out as the only receiver going to the right side of the field for Baker Mayfield. Makes it easy for Baker Mayfield to get rid of it. And, I mean, it's again, let your athletes do the hard work. They're creating in space, man. But, again, this was a brilliant tackle because, again, if this tackle is not made, Look at the hustle. Look at the fucking hustle. Man. Oh, man. That's a hell of a tackle, man. I, I, I think that played a major factor in them winning this game. But let's take a look at it again. It's, just, it's the play design. It's the concept of this play that I really like the most, man. Look, you even got Auden right here setting a, a little low-key screen right here so he can free up this running back. It's just, it's unfortunate that this, this motherfucker right here was fast as hell in getting to him and stopping him from getting that first down on this play. But again, I like the concept because this guy is wide open and he's by himself. So if we can get some athletes in here who are fast as hell, hey, I like this play, man. I, I really like this play design. And I think Dave Canales can be very sneaky and innovative moving forward into the 2024 season. And I can't wait to see how he uses this offense and what weapons we bring to the table so that we can see how this offense forms an identity. Let's move on to the next play, man. All right, guys. I know at this point in the video, man, first of all, shout out to you if you are still watching at this point in the video. Make sure you guys have hit that like button if you haven't already. Now, I know we talked about in the beginning, what does this have to do with Bryce Young? How can we play the Bryce Young strengths? This play specifically shows exactly what Bryce Young's strengths could be. Now, last year, I don't know if y'all remember, or if you guys are keeping up with the channel with my film studies, Bryce Young needs play action from under center. He needs to be able to roll out of the pocket to create some more time for his receivers to get open. And again, you just got to get the ball out quick. So right here, it's a very simple design, very simple design. It's just a play action rollout type of play. So you got 
at the top of your screen, the big bad wolf, Mike Evans. Mike Evans is coming across. Outen, their tight end, he is also coming across. Baker Mayfield is going to fake this ball to the to the running back. The running back is basically going to be a safety valve over here. And then you got your fullback. He's also going to be a safety valve as well. God went down here. He's pretty much just clearing. He's clearing the whole little play right here. He's not even a, a target on this play. All right, let's let this play run real quick. I'm going to slow it down as we watch. Now, Baker Mayfield with a fake handoff. He's rolling out to his right. Again, Bryce Young does well when he's improvising and rolling out. All right, so let's let this play run out. I'm going to slow it down as we talk about it. So, again, you got Mike Evans coming across. You got your tight end, Auden, coming across. And you got Godwin pretty much clearing. I don't know if that's Godwin or not. I can't really tell from the number. Y'all correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, man. But take a look at it, man. Your first read is going to be this tight end right here. Your second read is going to be Mike Evans. If these shit's not open, man, take off and go. That's one thing that Bryce Young really pissed me off with this year, man. Um... Standing stagnant in the pocket, if it's not there, he's still just desperately waiting for his receivers to get open. When at times he did show flashes that he can run. He's sneaky athletic, man. Bryce Young, he got some moves too. He can make guys look silly in space. One-on-one. -on -one. You're not getting Bryce Young in space when he's beyond a line of scrimmage at least. But one thing that do piss me off with Bryce Young, man, holding the ball too long, desperately waiting for your receivers, that shit is not going to cut it. I believe that he can improve, but if he doesn't, man, we're going to be in trouble. But right here, simple one-two read. If it's not there, go. But your tight end was open. Simple design. Play action roll out. Get the ball out of your hands. Make it simple for your quarterback. Let's move on to the next play, man. All right, guys, just to kind of talk a little bit more about the previous play and uh, Bryce Young's athletic ability. I'm not sure if this is just a heads up play by Baker Mayfield or if this is a design read option, but we're going to let this play run. I mean, it's nothing really to talk about right here, man. It's just an athletic play from Baker Mayfield, and this is just kind of further proving my point with um, Dave Canales' offense and how that can play to Bryce Young's strength. We talked about Bryce Young's athletic ability, so why not implement some plays here and there? Not often, but where Bryce Young is able to pull the ball and run for himself. Take a look at it right here. I'm going to let Baker Mayfield cook. You got pressure, heavy pressure down the middle. So, obviously, you're not going to hand this ball off up the middle. Defense is overly committed because they believe this is a dive up the middle. And what does Baker Mayfield do? Again, I don't know if this is just Baker's May Baker Mayfield's uh, awareness and he pulled this for himself. Or I, I don't know if this is a design play. I don't know. But regardless... This was a hell of a, a hell of a play by Baker Mayfield. So watch Baker Mayfield. He pulls, makes a move on this defensive end. God damn. Hold on. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Hold on one more time. Me? My goodness. And what does Baker Mayfield do? He shows his athleticism and he gets that first down. And he's going to let you know about it, too. To go back to my point, man, Bryce Young was not really utilized in the run game. Not saying he should be, but I do think we should have some sneaky plays here and there where we do utilize Bryce Young's athletic ability. I talked about it last time on film, and um, Bryce Young definitely has shown plenty of times throughout the season that he does have that, that ability to run and make defenders look silly in space. But we did not use design quarterback runs. We didn't use read options, especially when I felt like it could have been effective in the red zone. We were a team that really liked to line up in a shotgun and really hand it off of the middle. We could have took advantage of that and made defenses overcommit like they did here. And um, once they think it's going up the middle, Bryce Young just pulls and run out to the outside. So that's something I would like to see uh, be utilized more in 2024. When we need, like, you know, let's say it's third and, third and two. Third and two, you lined up in a shotgun. It's a four-down territory. Let Bryce Young pull that bitch for a read option. Let him read that defensive end. If that defensive end overcommits inside, let him pull and run outside. If the defensive end doesn't pull or doesn't commit inside and he's just defending the edge, let him hand it off of the middle. But, again, right here specifically, man, that everybody's overcommitted in the middle. Everybody's overcommitted in the middle. Yes, the defensive end does contain the edge, but Baker Mayfield is athletic enough to make a, a move on this guy and really carry the weight on this play right here. And I think Bryce Young has that ability as well. So let's see some more plays where Bryce Young is able to pull the ball. Let's see his athletic ability because he definitely has it. 
Um, again, I'm not saying it should be often, but we definitely can do shit like this. So let's move on to the next play. All right, guys, let's talk about how Dave Canales utilizes his tight ends down here in the red zone, man. Uh, Dave Canales is a guy who really likes to switch it up. Like, damn near every play. You don't know where the ball is going. It's not like you have a dominant player. And that's no knock on Mike Evans. It's really not, man. He even told you that his offense ran through Mike Evans. But that's not it. He's not just going to use Mike Evans and force feed the hell out of him. He's going to use every single athlete on his roster. He's going to take what the defense is giving him. And he's going to use his strengths on his roster. So, take a look at this play specifically, man. Um, he utilizes his tight end right here. Now, this is man coverage. So, this is very simple. A very simple concept. Godwin is just going to come throw a pick to free up this whole zone for the tight end. Man, he's going to run to the back corner of that end zone. And Baker Mayfield is going to give him a ball for him to basically um, get that toe tap. So, let's let it run real quick. A very simple concept. But, again, he switches it up so much that you don't know where the ball is going to go. Throws a pick. This should have been a touchdown, but the pick was illegal. If you take a look at it, man, Godwin did. He grabbed him. He grabbed him right here. That was an illegal pick. So if this was executed a little bit better, that's an easy touchdown. It's a great design. Simple, but brilliant. You know what I mean? So use different athletes. You don't know where the ball is going. I like this play right here, man. It's simple. I think the tight ends definitely can get off next year, man. Um, shout out to Trimble, by the way. Trimble don't get enough love on this channel. Trimble is a guy that I'm very high on. Um... I talked with a couple other podcasters, man, just about tight ends. And um, a lot of people really want to go into the draft and get a tight end. I disagree right there, man. I really disagree. I feel like we got bigger holes for one. But let's use what we got in this room. That's one thing that I do like about Dave Canales. He said, we're going to use what we got. Shit, y'all, if you, you here, so play ball. I think that Tommy Trimble has the potential to be a decent tight end in this league. I think he can put up maybe like 500 yards if we utilize him correctly. I think he's that type of tight end that could possibly get up anywhere up between 30 to 40 receptions in a season. And I think he could be Bryce Young's best friend, man. And uh, he's not the only tight end. We still got Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst definitely shows flashes here and there. I mean, he's been battling some injuries. But again, that just further goes to show you we don't really need a tight end and then you got Sullivan who I failed to mention just now but Sullivan who's also shown flashes that he can be Bryce Young's best friend as well man you got those big body those big body tight ends running across the field it makes it easy for them to be a big target so utilize your tight ends we don't need to get any more tight ends man I, I like Trimble I like our tight end room I feel like for what Dave Canales does we don't need our tight end to be the dominant receiver we just need you to be effective and do your job let's use what we have here and um let's build on that you know what i mean and i think again tommy Trevor has all the potential in the world i just i really don't think we used him correctly in these previous years and i'm interested to see how dave canales use him this coming season man so let's move on to the next right, guys, play. let's take a look at a running play right here man um i do like dave canales run designs man because he used so much pre-snap motion it can really free up different types of lanes for these running backs, man. And uh, right here on this play, it is on full display. Take a look at number 83 at the bottom of your screen. Hold on, let me pull up my pen right here. Take a look at number 83. 83, he got all this motion going on. Coming right here in the backfield. It's going to look like a, maybe like a swing route to these guys. But the point is, this defense is overly committed to the left side of the field because of this motion. Now, because of the commitment to the left side, Take a look at this handoff. We're going to let it run. Let's just let it run, man. Let me shut up and let it run. Take a look at how everybody's committed. And the ball is handed off to the left. You got White. Lowering his shoulder. Getting those extra yards. That's an easy first down. But let's slow it down, man. Let's slow it down. Look at, look at this motion right here. This looks like a damn play action right now. People probably thinking, like, okay, he's going to probably pull this ball. He's probably going to drop back. Take a look at this defender right here. Take a look at him. Look how he's faked out. He's trying to already catch his feet. He's trying to catch his feet because he don't know where the ball is going initially. He has to pump the brakes. He realizes that that ball is actually handed off. Take a look at another linebacker right here, another defender. He's got his eyes on 83 the whole time. He's basically playing man coverage, but he got his eyes on 83. He's not even worried about the run because he thinks it's a pass. So just when everybody commits to one side of the field, again, we've seen this from time to time with my last film study on Dave Canales and this one. When everybody is committing to one side, 
he goes to the next the next side and it's wide open look at this lane because of this motion that left side is wide open and shout out to that offensive line once again uh, hey Gilbert shout out to Gilbert again we got another offensive line coach here who came from Tampa Bay and uh, I think this Tampa Bay offensive line was very decent this year um, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what we can do with our offensive line I would love for us to get back to a kind of power run scheme but I, I doubt that'll happen but Again, this is effective, man. This is definitely effective. When you use so much pre-snap motion, it just causes so much stress on the defense. And you never know where that ball is going to go, man. So, shout out to Dave Canales for this run play. Let's move on to the next one. All right, one. guys, let's take a look at another play right here. Baker Mayfield back in the pistol formation. This is another example of a play-action rollout that I really like to see in this offense. This is a very simple play, man. Very simple play. If you take a look at Mike Evans, Mike Evans is running across. You got these guys pretty much running out routes. They're running out routes. But your tight end, again, we're using a tight end right here. This is a design play for the tight end. Auden is going to initially be a blocker on this play. He's going to come up and block, and then he's going to release. This makes it easy for the quarterback to find his big target, man. He's going to just block him. Everybody think he's just a blocker. They don't know if he's a receiver from the initial, uh, from the initial play. So as soon as he starts to block, he pulls out, pause, and then he catches the easy ball and gets 10 yards for a first down. So let's let it play. Let's let it play real quick. Again, this is another example of having your quarterback roll out. Baker is one of those short guys. You want him to roll out so he can see the whole entire field. Not saying he can't see the field from the pocket. But this is where, you know what I'm saying, Baker Mayfield is very effective. When he's rolling out to his right, same with Bryce Young. When they're rolling out to his right, very effective, easy. Easy first down. All right, man. guys, let's take a look at another play right here, man. Let's take a look at this defense. So take a look specifically uh, specifically at these cornerbacks right here, man. Um, these guys are playing deep third. Basically, they're backing up, playing the deep zone. They're not letting anything get past them. Take a look at Auden, though. Auden is going to run a post. Because these corners are in zone coverage, running basically like a deep third, the safety is running basically covering the middle of the field. Auden is going to be wide open, man. All right, so let's take a look at this motion. Take a look at the second level of the defense, basically the linebackers. Now take a look at the top of your screen where this linebacker is, right? He's forced to play that flat because that motion. They think that this receiver is going to come out and run a quick route. So this linebacker, as a result, has to sit on that flat route. As a result of that, look at, look at Auden. Look at Auden. He's going to run that post route, and he sees, he recognizes immediately that that this zone right here is a soft spot. So let me go ahead and use my awareness and continue to run up the field. You know what I mean? And Baker Mayfield gives him a nice delivery. They weren't exactly on the same page, but again, hey, they got the ball off. So effective right here, utilizing your tight ends. They just don't happen to have the right coverage, but that motion, again, it puts so much stress on the defense that it makes it hard to have to pick your poison on this uh, this play right, right here. guys, on this play, man, we don't even have to draw anything up right here, man. This is really just situational football and understanding the change. So, obviously, Dave Canales recognizes. I believe this was third down. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, man. But, obviously, you're going to bring pressure right here. You're going to bring pressure and you got man across the board. So, we're going to let this play run. This is a screen play. This is a screen play. A perfect time to call a screen. Take a look at the top of your screen. You got White motioning. You're going to suck in that defense. Look at this corner. He's That outside now is open because that motion brought him inside. So they bring that pressure. He dumps it off. That's an easy touchdown. This is just situ situational football. Dave Canales is recognizing that they might bring pressure. They got man coverage. So, again, bringing your guy in motion, forcing him inside. They bring hella pressure. They're trying to adjust. They're talking, communicating. Look at the pressure. Look at the pressure. Straight up the middle. And they got there. They definitely got there. But it's a screen. With a screen play, your pressure does not matter. <laughs> it does not matter because it's supposed to be designed to get it off quick. Baker Mayfield dumps it off. Situational football, man. Give your, uh, give your athletes the ability to make a play in space. Easy touchdown right here in the red zone. This is just Dave Canales recognizing this is situational football and taking what the defense is giving him. So great job by Dave Canales. Let's move on. All right, guys, let's take a look at this last play right here, man. Um, effective again in the red zone. Calling up 
the exact play that you need against the exact coverage that you are hoping for. So defense is playing zone coverage right here. You got Auden coming in motion. What Auden is going to run, he's going to pretty much run all the way to the end zone, to the back pile of the end zone, kind of like a seam route. Um, number 10, he's going to run a post. And as a result of that post, Mike Evans is also going to run a post. But as a result of this slot guy running a post, he's going to suck in that defense and you're going to basically give him a one-on-one -on -one opportunity against number one right here. So anybody one-on-one -on -one against Mike Evans probably got a, a high chance of losing that matchup. So number 19 is a safety valve coming across the field for Baker Mayfield. But Baker Mayfield is going to take the shot to Mike Evans. Let's let this play run and then we're going to talk about it and slow it down, all right? So out of motion, take a look at the top of your screen where those posts are, man. Creates that one-on-one. -on -one. Man. Easy touchdown. Let's slow this thing down, man. All right, so let's take a look at it from the top, man. Take a look at Auden. He's going to fake like he's going to run the out route, and then he's going to fake inside, try to run towards that end zone. Now, the important part to this play, man, look at, look at number 10. He forces this safety to turn his hips and try to guard him, right? As a result of that, you one on one. Look at Mike Evans, one on one. Baker Mayfield makes a gutsy throw to the end zone. I mean, look at that rocket. Dom. Look at where the ball is, man. At highest point where Mike Evans can get it only. Only Mike Evans can get it. Look at him boxing in, uh, boxing out number one. Hell of a throw by Baker Mayfield. This is a type of throws that you have to make in the NFL. This is called an NFL throw right here, man. If Dave Canales can pretty much get Bryce Young comfortable to making these throws, and we've seen these throws a little bit throughout the season, man. Um, a perfect example I would like to uh, pull up is the touchdown to DJ Chark down the middle against Green Bay. That was a gutsy throw. Also, another gutsy throw was um, when Bryce Young hit Adam Thielen in the back of the end zone against the Miami Dolphins. This type of throw right here could be similar to what we could see with Bryce Young. If you get him a nice weapon that could be good with 50-50 balls, Pauls, I think we could be effective right here, man. I mean, because the play designs is there. Dave Canales, I don't, I don't like. I know I said in my last video that I was not, you know, jumping on a on a train yet. I'm not gonna sit here and say like, oh, I'm getting my hopes up, and I'm still, I'm still there. I'm not gonna get my hopes up just yet. But hey, I like Dave Canales, man. I really, really like Dave Canales, and I hope for the sake of me liking him, man. I hope he does have success here in Carolina. Because if he does it, man, I, I do fear that our fan base will come for Dave Canales, man. I did, our fan base is so idiotic and wishy-washy. If you fuck up, <laughs> they're going to hold it against you for the rest of your duration here in Carolina, man. Unless you can, you know, erase it with some wins. But that's just the fan base here. They're going to dog you. They're going to trash you if you fuck up, bro. So, Dave Canales, bro, I believe in you. I do. I'm not going to get my hopes up, but I do believe and Dave Canales because he definitely has a brilliant mind. He has a young mind and he makes sense of what he's saying, man. He don't just get in these press conferences and just yap at the mouth like we've been seeing these last couple of years. He's making sense and he's not giving away a lot of information. He's just telling you how he played football. Take what the defense is giving. So I do believe that Dave Canales can bring his scheme to Carolina, but we got to get the personnel, obviously, to run this type of scheme. I don't know what Dave Canales is going to do here, but, you know, seeing the result of what he did at Tampa Bay, switching it up, using a lot of pre-snap motion, a lot of different play designs, a lot of different routes, a lot of different run designs with the pre-snap motion. I really don't see how Dave Canales could fuck this up, man. I really don't. It's really going to be up to the, to the execution of the players, and really it's going to depend on what kind of personnel we got in here, man. And, um, one thing I do like, again, about Dave Canales is that he's going to use what we have in this roster and play to their strengths. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Dave Canales can bring to the Carolinas, man. Um, shout out to Dave Canales. I'm really hoping this time that we got our guy. I don't want to see another coach come and go, especially now that I have, you know what I'm saying, I, 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 I've... I've developed a liking for this coach. So <laughs> I'm hoping for, again, for the sake of that, man, I hope he is successful. But it's all going to depend on number nine executing these plays, man. Number nine has to show some improvement, but you got to get a supporting cast around him. And I believe that we are going to do just that, man. Shout out to Dan Morgan, our new GM. I believe that they are going to get these guys some help. And I believe that we're going to get an offense that can play decent enough 
to play complementary football with our amazing defense. So if we can do that, we can definitely be a decent team to be reckoned with in the NFL. Maybe about mm, seven to eight wins on the season if we can be effective on the offense because defense is going to hold it down regardless. I mean, especially with us retaining Jairo Evero, I think we're going to be just fine, man. But, hey, once again, shout-out to Dave Canales. I'm wishing for your success. Same thing with number nine, man. Hey, one thing I do want to let y'all know, man, my stance with Bryce Young, bro, I'm riding the train to that motherfucker wreck, bro. I do believe that Bryce Young can prove the doubters wrong, and I believe that he will prove the doubters wrong. And best believe when that happens, I'm pulling out all the receipts, and I'm going to be the biggest asshole on this YouTube shit, and I'm coming for everybody who was talking shit about Bryce Young. But in the same breath, I'm not expecting y'all to let up on me neither. If Bryce Young turned out to be a fucking bust, if he doesn't execute the offense like he needs to, especially if we get him a supporting cast, and he turns out to be ass, <laughs> I don't expect y'all to not let me have it, man. Pause. And, hey, rightfully so, man. If you guys want to come in here and talk shit, hey, I'm a man. I'm a word, bro. Hey, if I was wrong, I'm wrong, bro. It is what it is. But, hey, right now I'm riding the Bryce Young train. I'm riding the Dave Canales train. I do believe in these guys. I believe this will be a, a, a match made in heaven. But again, I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm just sitting back and watching. I told y'all my stands with Bryce Young. So, hey, at this point, we all are spectators. We can talk all off season. You know what I'm saying? We can force the hell out of some topics. But I'm not going to do that, man. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to study. I'm going to read. I'm going to watch this film. I'm going to see who we get in this draft. I'm going to see who we get in the free agency. And I'm going to bring you guys content based on their film. You know what I mean? Y'all know how we do over here at the Panthers Experience. We 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 pulling up the proof, man. We pulling up the proof, and we're gonna see what they do well. We're gonna see what they do bad. Yada yada. We're gonna break all that shit down, man. But I'm not about to sit here and tell y'all Bryce Young this, Bryce Young that, man. His rookie season is behind us. It is what it is, bro. Whether you like him or not, whether you think he had a shitty year or not, bro, it don't matter because at this point in year two, we really about to see what Bryce Young is, and we're gonna see what Dave Canales can do with Bryce Young. Is he gonna fix him or not? Anyway, with that being said, man, I appreciate you guys so much for pulling up to the channel and sticking with me through this long video. I know this video is really long, but hey, man, I feel pretty good, man. Uh, it's raining outside, you know what I'm saying? I'm very calm. Um, feeling good, bro. Got me a new little setup, you know what I'm saying? Y'all peeped the setup, man. <laughs> got the setup, got the microphone and shit like that. So I felt really good sitting here, you know, potting with you guys and talking about the film and breaking down the film with you guys. So. You know, until next time, man, I'll probably go live, maybe. I don't know, man. Y'all just stay tuned for the details moving forward, man. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss what I do post on the channel, man. So, with that being said, y'all comment below, man. Let me know if you agree or not, man. What is your stance with Dave Canales? Do you believe in, uh, in Dave Canales or are you just waiting to see? What about Bryce Young? Are you in or are you out? Let me know in the comment section, man. Talk your shit. I'll meet you there. As always, man, stay true to yourself. Keep being you. Follow those dreams and turn those dreams into goals. And go get it, fam. I love you guys. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.